another episode and I have a dear friend. I have Shakti in the house. Hey, sister. Hello. It's so fun to be here with you. It's always a time for joy, play and expansion. Expansion. Yes. Joy, play and expansion. Yes. Shakti and I have been friends for years. She's actually been on the podcast already and there's some things that we need to talk about and she is the one to help us with what's going on in the world and shifting and changing. Before we go there, I'm going to share with you a little bit about her. So Shakti Patazi is a modern day, I love that, modern day medicine woman. You so are a sister. She has studied the spiritual path for decades with masters from the Eastern philosophies, as well as masters in Andean, Jesuit, and Native American traditions. This woman, I can read on and on about all of her accomplishments, all the things she's done. And I and we were just talking before this, and I'm like, no, she's awesome. Let's dive in. <laughs> she's awesome. It. She's here. Let's, let's, let's get her wisdom out yeah. now. So... <laughs> Things are changing. Yeah. The earth is changing. We're changing. We've been through such an upheaval, huge impact on so many different aspects of our life. And people are, are <laughs> like, how do, how do you deal with this rapid change? What's going on? And I'm curious, what's your slant on it? And, um, and what do you think is blossoming from this time of transformation? Yeah, wow. I love the topic. Uh, not only are times changing and uh, fast speed, but we are going to have more fast speed 2023 towards 2024, even more. So this is a time where as we become aware of this, getting ready to learn how to navigate life in this new way because this is not going back to the way things were slower paced or the illusion of more certainty. This is uncertain and it will keep being because what we're creating has never been before. And so we're, we're creating or co-creating is more correct. And we are visioning and dreaming the creation. And that is why for most of us, it's sometimes so such a wild ride because we really don't have quite clear what it is that we're creating, even though we know in our hearts, our hearts are our, our compasses that tell us, yeah, over here or over here, right? Like which direction we need to go. So it's it's a fascinating time. I I believe my experience is that as we learn to tap into our inner wisdom, our inner knowing, we can uh, truly call into our lives a lot of magic. Magic is here for us. And when I say magic, I mean uh, the beautiful synchronicities, the right people popping up in our lives, the right music that comes as an answer to a thought, the triple numbers that we see everywhere telling us the angels are with us and all those things that the more we tune into that and the more we on purpose raise our own vibration and keep our vibrations raised the more they happen and as we tune into that and follow our inner wisdom we one step at a time radically transform our lives mm. wow okay take a breath into that sister who's watching and listening things are happening and yet things have always been happening. You know, when you look through the, the years, the decades, the, you know- The, the millennia. Eons, yes, right, right, right. Um, so why is it different now? Like what actually, you know, you're talking about uncertainty and yet there's always uncertainty. You're talking about upheaval. There's always upheaval and yet there's something else going on. And you were talking about creation and shifting, like what actually is going on? from your perspective yeah there's <laughs> oh my gosh so many things we could say but um let's take this into one of the many containers we can so yes change has always happened in humanity and we know through the history that we know that 
the pace of life wasn't as hectic as it is today. The nature of what it was to live on Earth and the way life was wasn't as hectic. From a, from a the, the, theological standpoint and the Eastern traditions and the cosmic and galactic wisdom and the Mayans, like all these uh, cultures and the Native Americans they, and the Andes, they all say the same thing, that we have cycles on Earth uh, of expansion and wisdom, and we have just ended a 26,000 year cycle of uh, what is known in many traditions as Kali Yuga. Kali is the goddess of destruction. And it was a cycle where we learned through experiences with difficulty and um, really contrast and bad and good and struggle. And that was what that was. And when one looks back at the history of man, uh, there's wars and there's wars and there's wars. And it's crazy when you look back, you realize that humanity has lived in war the whole time in the past. Yeah. And we've recently stepped into a new cycle known as Satya Yuga. And it's about a cycle where it's actually love that can really, really be the guiding force. And it's a cycle where Buddha used to say closer than 26,000 years, 2,500 years, he used to say, there's going to be a time where we all, we all will be rising up together, each one with our own Buddhahood, and we'll, you'll all be mm. by my side. And he says, 10,000 Buddhas rising by my side. And that always touches me very deeply because it is this time. It's the time where there is no longer any other master or guru than you. And it is tapping into who you are, your wisdom, your inner knowing, your higher self, your divinity, call it the name you want. We're always talking about that aspect of ourselves that knows way beyond what the mind knows. And that sometimes we have to learn to trust and we have to give room to. And it is through really, really allowing that aspect of ourselves to blossom that we are going to live better, experience love, and I mean love first and foremost with ourselves, but through that magnetically have love relationships with friends and families and our kings or queens or whatever it is we like. Yeah. And, and it is a true moment where all this rapid change is happening so that old paradigms that are firm or dense can be dismantled because this rapid change shakes us to a point that we cannot even using all of our energies keep that old structure in place and so it crumbles and so so let me just hop in there for a second um <laughs> It sounds so amazing. It's like like going to Oz. I, I want to go to Oz, <laughs> you know. And there it is. And you know, um, and things are kind of messy, you know. Oh. The people can say that this might be the worst of things. It's the most chaotic. The people are so divided. There's so much pain. Yes. There's so much confusion. Yes. You know, kind of what I, <laughs> I'm laughing because I I have an analogy that it's like you know when you have to poop. And the closer you get to the toilet, you have to poop even more. I don't know if that's true for you. But, you know, if you're driving, you're like, oh, I got to go. I got to go to the bathroom. And the closer you want to poop, you whatever, the closer you get, the more, you know, it feels intense. Yeah. Because on some level, it's like, oh, it's happening. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious if that's actually what we're talking about here, which is there's like this building up and we're getting close to something that's going to shift so that it's it's like the storm that's building 
and then the sunlight that comes after, because I ain't seeing a lot of love right now. You know, if I'm talking to people like you and some of my, my dear, dear friends that were, you know, we're high vibing on the possibilities and love and heart and, you know, Om Shanti Shanti, right? Um, more people are in the, oh my God, things are so dire. Things are so crazy. Is that what's going on? Is it's just kind of like that pimple coming to a head until it, you know, all these bodily things. <laughs> yeah, yes. And more. So I want to address that on two fronts. One is that part of what I was saying and the part of the answer of what you're asking is that in the past, we allowed ourselves to be led by a few and mm. the darkness and the difficulties and the the um the lies and the manipulations and the corruption and name it you name it all the things we know used to be hidden and i'm talking even you know the 1900s and late 1900s close to 2000 so when when that happens the result is that let's let's give it a name just for the purpose of the podcast, like the bad or the evil or the dark or whatever you want to call it, right? The bad aspects, the lower energy aspects, because we live in a dual world. So there's light and there's dark. And where there's more light, there's more dark, right? That's mm -hmm. the way it is. And yeah. the, the 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 way in which we come up out of duality is through love as 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 trite as that may sound but let me go so back true. to no, answer I mean, your... it's so true it's just it melts all of the crazy it is <laughs> and unity consciousness the unity consciousness the oneness consciousness the understanding that i'm just like you and that we have more common points than differences but let me go back to finish this concept so all this density let's call it was able to operate and have power because since nobody saw it it kept operating right underground and so life was illusionary less problematic but the truth is that there was a lot of yuckiness continuously going on yeah. so once we moved to this new cycle what is happening is that in order to clear that and get rid of that in a way even though we cannot get rid it's going to be a quantum transformation we have to see it you cannot, if, if it keeps operating and hiding, it'll keep operating and hiding. So what we started seeing, we started seeing yucky things in government, corruption, lies, deceit, robberies, and all the muck we're seeing. That is because now we can move beyond that because we can see it. So what happens is that as we're seeing it and there's so much hidden that's coming up and it's coming up, people think, oh, wow, it's like everything is collapsing. True, it is because all this crap is coming up, but yeah. it is through this collapsing, then there's room for the new, the better. That's one aspect of your answer. So yeah, it is. It's like when the pimple finally it's so full, you finally can get rid of it. And it's the same thing. <laughs> All I these totally get it. Today. I totally get it. <laughs> and just like me as a shadow worker, it's like, you know, it, you know, as long as it's behind you, as long as you don't know what's what the muck is. Exactly. It's it's running us. It's it's affecting us. But as soon as it's out, it can get a little funky, it can get a little hard, but at least we know what we're dealing with and then we can clean it up. Yes. Absolutely. And in the other aspect, I said two parts of the answer. So that's one that addresses one aspect. And the other aspect is what I was leading to. And it's that we are becoming our own gurus, our own wise women, wise men. And we are standing up into understanding that what we know with capital K to be truth is our truth and is what matters and we're learning to unlearn all the things that we were told that we couldn't shine bright the stars in the universe all shine bright it's not like one star shines and the other one gets mad and we are learning that so it's the worthiness journey and the other one is the love journey right these are two main aspects of who we are and then there's the empowered woman which is the one that can trust that wisdom and can trust that her own connection to the divine, call it again, whatever you want, the inner knowing, the inner wisdom, the whatever name you want to give it, is 
the valid and true way for her. Okay. Awesome. 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 So here's this woman who's in the second half of life. She's most likely single, typically on this podcast, and she's navigating all of this. She's, and you know, if she's in this, you know, listening, she is desiring more of that agency, that connection to herself, to the universe, to being able to love her life. And then there's all this chaos going on, not only in her shifting, her changing, all of what we're talking about. What might you offer to this woman in reference to handling these times of change while she's already in times of change, being by herself, maybe just got divorced, you know, new chapter. And then with this, like, what might you offer around that? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so much I can offer. Uh, but let me be succinct for the purpose of the podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on a on a very esoteric level, you said I'm a medicine woman. I work with numbers. I went with I work with the cosmos, uh, the cosmological cycles, the cycles of Earth like we used to be uh, when we lived in tribal communities. We used to follow the cycles of the moon and the Earth and the sun and the seasons. And with this, I also honor what are known as time portals. So um, ever since this, we've been having many of these portals in the last uh, few years. And recently we stepped through one, the 7th of July of 2023, and 2023 adds up to seven, that's a 777 portal which is about love and it's about the answer I'm going to give you. But last year on June 6th, which was a 666 portal, we stepped through that portal that activated for for the next 13 months, right now, a week ago, and whenever, whoever will listen to the podcast, know that we're talking about the 7th of July of 2023. And the, the journey, the lesson was a lesson of Am I going to live life choosing the foundation? The fi- is the foundation of my decisions and my choices fear or is the foundation love? Am I going to live life through fear or love? But let me give you a very clear example and allow me to go all the way with where I'm going. Something simple like when somebody chooses a wholesome meal. Am I choosing to eat this beautiful, colorful wholesome meal with all colors of vegetables and and really beautiful because I'm afraid that I'm get, going to get sick if I don't eat this kind of thing? Or am I choosing this because I love the yumminess of it? I love how my body feels when I eat this kind of food. It's the same, but it's not the same at all. One yeah. is led by fear. So then we come to this portal you said women midlife where they're going through so much change this portal 777 is called a divine portal of love and transformation and it's a rebirthing portal a time to allow yourself to reinvent your life how through tuning continuously from that choice of fear love fear love that we were trained Mm. keep coming down to the heart So it's easy to be in the mind because when we're in fear and in a dual world, we're in the mind. Oh, should I do this or should I do that? Does this cost this? This cost that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Do I want this? So when you go down to the heart, the heart is not dual. There is no uh, duality in the heart. Mm -hmm. There's it. This is actually like an energy thing. The heart has a flow of giving and receiving. And when you're in the process of complete life transformation and you're rebirthing yourself, yeah, you said it's messy. Oh, absolutely. Being birthed is messy. Birthing a child, whoever is a mother beyond all the experiences you said, know how traumatic it is for the child to go through the birth canal, how traumatic it is for a butterfly to break the cocoon, the chrysalis, so she can be birthed. If you help the butterfly by cutting the chrysalis so she can be easier birth, she will never fly because the wings will never fill with the right water by the hydraulics of the strength that she needs to use to break the chrysalis. And the same is true for us as, as, as adults going through deep, deep loss on a way 
and at the same time hope from the new and the understanding that this coexistence of the grief from the loss and what we're leaving behind and the hope for what's coming that is what rebirthing is all about it's about gaining from all of that experience and yes there's hope and where does it start here come down to your heart and mm -hmm. seek there all the answers in this messy world you will find the answers there beautiful so beautiful so beautiful, so profound, and yet so simple. <laughs> you know, it's like if we just slow down and just check in and really go into our heart, it's like, ah, oh, so great. You know, a little bit of a tangent, but I want to ask you this about like traveling, where people live. I mean, so many people, at, you know, that I talk to clients, they they have a little bit of the wanderlust. There's the, oh, maybe I want to move somewhere. And I'm just curious, from your perspective, like the moving, the sinking in into one place, certain hot spots on the planet, um, does it influence us in this stage of life? How do you view it? Oh my gosh, I love that question also because in the last years, I've been led to travel all the time, but not as my choice. It was like, no option, you're traveling. It's just like- Oh my God, life you just told me, boomed. you just like, people just was like, come here, come there, come to India. <laughs> this year alone, I've been a month in India, a month in Mount Shasta, California, a month in Argentina, a month in Italy, been a all month in Las Vegas, all over the place. So how is um, that for you? And what the, how does that impact yes, you and your yes. journey? And I want to speak to both, to the person that is more- staying in that land in that place in that home and for those that have the wonder lost and there's there's something that happens when one travels let's start with that for a moment and it's that perspective changes um without even wanting to you just see things that are so different than than what you're used to that you suddenly have oh my gosh, I was looking at my life this way and look at this. And it just creates space, particularly in a moment where the old is crumbling or disappearing or it has already. And you're just standing in this in-between place of the new life and the old life and really don't know what the new life may look like. So there's that aspect of it. And then there's an aspect of the fact that in this moment, and again, this moment that is so unique on earth, many of us are being called to move, to move even our locations, not even travel, to move from here and live over there. And yes, to travel as well. And some of us are led to travel a lot like myself and others are led to travel here and there. And yes, there are locations on earth that are sacred spots on earth, Famous ones are Egypt, like I'm taking a group there at the end of the year. Mount Shasta, Sacred Mountain. I was there for a full year. Not, It was clearly by design that I needed to be there. And so, so many places on earth that have that. And there are also other places that are not necessarily in the map of known sacred locations, like, again, Stonehenge or whatnot, but they're still places where for some reason either you have to live or you're being called to and yeah. why why because we are not just the flesh we are also a physical and a spiritual being in a physical body and the physical body is a container that is made of flesh and light and electricity electromagnetic and this body of light naturally and effortlessly without you having to do anything is always communicating through you with the heaven and earth there's always an exchange from above to below and below to above mm. through your beingness you don't have to do anything about it if you're a meditator on top of that if you're a person that has time for contemplation or sitting in nature you may even be very aware of how that happens but even if you're not it's still happening mm -hmm. and therefore wherever you are that radiant expression of the divine that is flowing through you will be affecting in beauty that space where you are mm. and will be anchoring 
people call many things codes of light 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 has codes right it comes in a frequency those light codes that your body through your unique beingness your way in which your body is physical and luminous are going to anchor those codes right there and in so doing you're being transform you act differently you speak differently you love differently you all the things and also the land and everybody nearby is being transformed and so that's why it's not just those that travel it's also those that are being called to be stable in a place we're all doing a very specific task i as a spiritual teacher as a shaman i'm very very aware that I'm being taken here, there, and there, and I'm doing what is known, you may have heard it, people call it grid work. It's mm-hmm. a, you'll see it in social media. It's like, what what the heck is grid what work? What is grid work? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it? It's actually a very simple concept. And it's we call it grid because it, from a metaphysical standpoint, from an energetic standpoint, the parallels and the meridians of the earth exist also in the um, in the luminous body of the earth. The earth also is done by the physicality and the luminous body, just like we are. And so those meridians create a grid, right? Christ crossing north, south, east, west. Yeah. And so when we are consciously doing ceremony, rituals. I mean, I work with the elements, I work with the earth, with the fire, with the wind and air, and with the water. I take waters from here to there, bless the headwaters of the rivers, do ceremony mm-hmm. in the woods, and talk to the elementals. And I mean, I do a lot of that work, and I That's do it so with amazing. others. Yeah. When people want to come with me, I do retreats and all kinds of things. So when we are consciously connecting that grid, that point in the grid, to the divine light and in communion with all the elements and i'm talking material i'm talking the earth the water the rivers i mean i'm not talking like esoteric there is the esoteric aspect of the fairies the elementals and you know there is that yeah yeah, yeah. there's lots of different ways yeah right but also in a very real earthly manner absolutely that's what is grid work what we're doing is we're intentionally calling the most beautiful vision for the new earth that we're creating as a result of the collapsing of the old, how anchoring in all these places that we go or we live and sacred locations, especially at this time, hold what is known as like capsules, time capsules that unlock when people that are meant to be there go there. And that information transforms the person that then takes it home and transforms whatever life they have. And at the same time, it carries new wisdom, activates remembrances, and modifies also the sacred site, which is like a fountain emanating light for everybody. And the whole earth is, this is a big topic. It's a big, it is a big you know, topic. And what I, I, I can totally grok why you're going to Egypt. <laughs> yes, yes. So why don't you it's take a couple coffee. minutes and share about that? Because yes. I would love our, our listeners, watchers to, um, kind of pull this all together and know about this beautiful opportunity to do some work with you. Yeah, it's been a a calling. Egypt calls us. Many are taking people to Egypt this year. And it's not a coincidence. It's because we are being tasked to do this. And it, it is an opportunity to serve and also be served because when visiting Egypt in particular, that is, has so much of the rising and falling of what is known as the divine feminine or the feminine archetype when it was in full bloom versus all of the latest 4,000 years where it was so hurt and uh, disempowered and we're bringing that harmony that balance between the masculine and the feminine this is not just about the feminine and we all have the both inside and by traveling to a sacred location and in particular i invite you if you feel the inkling if you feel the calling if you feel something inside saying but i'm curious check it out because it's going to be a very intimate group and i know because i've been shown that every person in the uh, in the small group that we're going to be is going to have a role 
individually without having to do anything in particular. We are like different uh, logs, different numbers in a log that is a coded number, uh, not coded log. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how do they find out about the Egypt trip? Well, it's on my homepage, uh, the Awaken Path, A W A K E N Path. And um, I think you can share that, right? As oh, well. yeah. The, the yeah. links will be in the show notes. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have some it's free there. gifts on that, that page, too, as yes, well. Yes, there's um, two different meditations. One is to connect to all of the earth and all of the cleansing of that channel that communicates above and below. Another one is to call in your own spiritual guidance and then there's um there's more there's more gifts just go there and check all them right. out because definitely go check it out yeah. free oh, of course there, it's i i, I... <laughs> <laughs> podcast no interview. words no words <laughs> seriously though i i just yeah. adore you and i'm so grateful that you had some time to share this message and i hear it as a message of hope because there are a lot of people that are kind yeah. of feeling hopeless and feeling feeling the craziness and 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 identifying with it versus really seeing it as an opportunity because you again know, when there's chaos things do shift and change and when we know this message of hope and love and light and transformation and that it's a process it's not like cut the chrysalis you know it's like we are in the chrysalis and it's uncomfortable in certain yes ways. yes yeah and i i want to add one gem that i kept wanting to send i didn't say and it's to watch for all those times when you put your power outside of yourself when nice. you feel that you're at the whim of the winds or the waters and instead call that back and remember that you can choose you can determine you can act all through your own power so Beautiful. i just want to do it in alignment with the heart like we said before yes yeah. yes thank you honey thank you so much for spending some time with us yeah thank you for having me here i just could speak with you forever i love having these conversations thank you for putting yourself out there for this beautiful podcast and love and blessings to all of you listening that you may truly feel what it means to be by you that you may receive the gift that you are to the world mm -hmm. which is one of the most difficult things to perceive ah yes and on that note complete sisters see you next week for the next episode go check out shakti's page and go to egypt with her be yeah. well Mwah. thank you bye one more thing before you go have you taken my discover your love avatar quiz it's a two-minute quiz that can help you not only know your strengths your your superpower because you have one also identify some of your blind spots, some of the things that might be having you in your fear, having you behaving in ways that aren't in alignment with your highest self, the way you want to be when it comes to dating and relationships. And it'll also help you discover why maybe the stars haven't lined up for you yet. Bottom line is, you take this two minute quiz, you get a full report in your email with details on how to move forward in next level love, whether you want a partner or not. So you can go to midlifeloveoutloud.com slash love quiz. The link is in the show no notes as well. And if you haven't liked and subscribed to the station, I'm going to encourage you to do that too. So you don't miss any episodes. And I hope you got a ton out of today's. See you next week. Mwah.